talk about willow, which of course has been used for centuries for everything from making walls to making houses to making baskets. In England it was used very much in the agricultural field for collecting potatoes. In fact, all sorts of things, cages, and were used in hospitals, it was used all over the place until the year of plastic, I guess, the years of plastic. Willow was a huge industry, both in Europe and in England. Now, of course, it's still there, but we don't use it very often. But there are three different sorts of willow that we can use in basketry. First of all, there's this willow, which is we call this brown willow. Not really so much about the colour, but because it's got its bark on. And this is exactly how it grows in the field. When you grow willow, you grow willow as a shrub, and you cut it back every year and it's called coppicing. And so you cut it right back. And this, in fact, is a first year shoot. And you see there are no side branches on it. So it just comes up nice and straight and tall and beautiful. If this hadn't have been cut down, when it was cut down, the second year it would have had branches and it would have got bigger and taller. But of course, for basketry, we don't want branches. They have to be cut off. So this is an ideal way of making basket material. It's cut every year and of course every year it comes back and it grows again. So that's brown willow. It was used in England for all the dirty things like anything to do with agriculture. And for years and years they didn't discover how to peel it. But that's something else. The second one thing they discovered was that they could make white willow. And they could make white willow by cutting the brown willow in the spring when the leaves were growing and peeling it and it would be a lovely white colour. And this was considered a very clean willow, and it was used for things like butcher baskets and hospitals. And anything indoor, it was considered much cleaner. They didn't think the brown willow was particularly clean, but this was white and shiny and clean. So that, for hundreds of years, was just those two. And then some very clever man discovered that if you boiled the brown willow, you could remove the bark. And by removing the bark, it became smooth, like this. But you might wonder why it's brown. Well, it's brown because the dye, there was dye in the, in the bark peel. And when they were steamed in these big containers, so they could remove the peel, they were dyed by themselves. And so that's why we call this buff willow. And you can see it's smooth. There's no bark on it at all, but this was boiled and then it was put through a machine and the peel was taken off. And this is done um, rather in, a, in a, a very industrial way. They have big machines and they put them through and they take all the peel off. Now I thought I'd show you how to peel a willow because I have something called a willow break. Now this was used probably by many people in England to prepare their own willow. And this is how a willow is. It has, before you peel it, it has to be my cat wants to play. <laughs> it has to be growing. You can't peel willow until the sap's rising because otherwise the um, peel will just stick on. It won't come off. So to put this in, top, I'm going to have to pull it through here now. I'll get it off. And you can see it's, there comes the peel. And there's our white willow underneath all ready to be used for baskets. Now, this will only happen in the um, early summer because as soon as it gets hot and dry, the peel won't come off. I used to have this on a tree stump when I lived in Oakville and I would do 25 a day as my, to get them done. There we are. And there's my white willow. Now, if you, if you want to dye, make anything, you know, dye any of your socks or old jerseys or anything. There's lovely dye in that, which of course can be boiled. Now, sometimes people want to divide the willow and make it in, instead of one piece, make it thin. Because for uh, years they, they didn't want all their willow work to be terribly heavy. So they would make it thin, they would divide it. And they would divide it in the middle. Now, before I was on the movie, I cut this into a, a T, across and across. And I'm going to show you how, how to split it. This is called a cleave. 
It's a lovely little machine. It's made of you. It's hard as nails. And it's going to divide my willow rod into three pieces. And I push my cleave down through the willow. Can you see how I'm doing it? I'm dividing this into three pieces. So instead of having one willow now, I'm going to have three, which will make it much more gentle little basket. I won't have to use the thick willow. So here we are. We've now got three pieces of willow instead of one piece of willow, which is very nice. And it's got a, I know you're a nuisance, aren't you? It's got a bit of a sharp edge in it. Now, if I was using this for a basket, I wouldn't want to have that little sharp edge. So I would get my big sharp knife and I would just give it a bit of a clean up. I just put this in and I just take, see how to make it flat? And I will be using that to make my basket. And so it's much finer, it's much easier to work with, and it makes a much more delicate basket than a big lumpy one. So that's very fun, and it's called skeining. And we skein quite a lot. Or in Germany they make lovely baskets with skein, which is a fine white willow basket. So that's the secret of skeins and willow, and the white willow. But now I think I'd just like to talk a little bit about growing willow, if you would like to make your own willow bed. And this is a little packet of cuttings. Willow is one of the things that grows extremely easily. If you want to grow cuttings and you cut some willow off, you can put it in the water where you're growing cuttings and it has um, this magic hormone in it. Now you can see these have grown beautifully. See the roots have grown off on these. So these would be lovely to plant in my garden if I wanted to grow a willow bed. Okay, now we're going to look at my willow bed, which is brand new, so the willows aren't very big yet. I ordered the cuttings. I wanted coloured willow. I chose where I wanted to put it. They like sunshine. They like, they don't have to have a lot of water, but they like, you know, they like not to be in a sort of on top of the hill. So I put them at the bottom of the hill. I thought the, perhaps the rain would run down here. And I had a nice big bit of black plastic. So I covered up the grass with black plastic. Um, willow cuttings are very sensitive to being overpowered by weeds and grass. They're not happy. They like a little space on their own when they're new and they're brand new cuttings. So I, I put this down, anchored it down so that it won't blow away in the wind. And I planted my, my rows of cuttings. I've got four rows here. And you can see here's one little fellow, and he's growing. It's a good thing to put a label by them if you want to remember which is which. And that one's got his label stuck down there, so I know who he is. During the summer, the plastic will kill all the grass underneath, but I didn't take away the grass, I just put it, laid it on top. And I will have to come up and do a little bit of weeding, because they, they won't want weeds around them. They won't be happy if they've got weeds around them. But I have already weeded them once. See, there's a little fellow in there growing. So I'll let them grow. They Hopefully, by the end of the summer, they'll be up to about here. And I won't cut them back this year. I'll let them have their, all their branches. And next year, they hopefully will grow bigger and better. And then I'll start cutting them and using them for my willow. But this year, they won't be cut. They'll have a chance to establish. And this will be my willow bed. And this is my willow fence that I made. Um, you can see it's all willow. It's got a little bit of bark in it and they were just big tall willows that I planted and then I wove in and out. I made it a sort of curvy shape because it was more fun. I have just treated this with linseed oil and terps. It won't last forever. I think it's been here four years, three or four years now and um, I need to come and put a few of these in but if I bend them when they're dry they'll break. It's good strong sturdy fence. It's just a nice way of using willow and a nice way of making a fence that doesn't look too stern. Mm -hmm.